Hi, everyone. My name is Lindsay Boggs. Thanks for coming to our session. It's great to see so many faces that I've known, some of you virtually, for a long time online, and now I get to meet you in person, so that's great. Um, I'm going to start my story at the downfall of my career in 2015. So up in, leading into 2015, I was doing a lot of prospecting. I was doing really well in sales. I'd gotten my first sales job. I had the per picture perfect family growing up, everything white picket, white picket fence, the whole, the whole thing. And I decided I wanted to get into sales after so many people had been saying, you you'd be really good in sales. And I thought that was actually derogatory. I was like, what does that mean? To be really good in sales. What are you trying to say? So I ended up getting my first job in sales and I was really successful very, very quickly. And the reason why is I was doing things differently than my teammates. My teammates were doing 130 dials a day, Heads, heads down, calling bad data, and I was going on LinkedIn, which is what I'm known for. I was going on LinkedIn and finding my prospects and nurturing them and sending them personalized messages. I was doing things totally different in 2011. Nowadays, you look at me and say, duh, that's what you do. But back then, 2011, 2011 I was a pioneer of social selling. So everything was going great. My Facebook page was crystal clear perfection perfect pictures, perfect blonde haired children, per blue eyes, the whole thing, perfect car, perfect house, white picket fence, the whole thing, great marriage. And then I was on a business trip and um, suddenly my world came colliding down, right? So everything was great up until then. I had been featured at LinkedIn conferences. I had shot free throws with Shaquille O'Neal. Was anyone there by chance? when it happened? Okay. Because there's some people in the room that look familiar. And I ended up um, being on a business trip and I got a text saying that my sister Melissa had collapsed. And I was thinking, okay, you know, what does that mean when somebody collapses? Are they, did they faint? Is it severe? And it wasn't until they sent a picture of her in the hospital room that I knew it was serious. And so I got on the next flight and I went there and I got to the top of the elevator um, in DC and my dad and mom were standing there at the top and I had never seen my dad cry before. So I knew at that point that it was very, very serious. And so I went to the room after multiple times going in. I don't know if anyone has experienced death in a tragic way. Um, every death is tragic, but in a very particular way. Um, went to the room, all of the tubes, our hair was shaved off, lots of imagery that I wish I could get out of my head that I can't. And I didn't know what to do other than work. And I know now, after lots of therapy saying that, it's crazy, but work was my foundation of my life. I was Lindsay Boggs. Like, I can do anything. I was LinkedIn famous. I had shot free throws with Shaquille O'Neal. Everything was grand. My Facebook was wonderful. And here I am with my sister who's just pronounced dead, and I bring out my laptop, and I start working. How messed up is that? But that's all I knew because work was my go-to. Work was my release. Work was where I was in control. My personal life, all those pictures were fake. All those pictures of me traveling in first class with champagne and all the wonderful things, I was actually really alone and I was actually really depressed. I didn't have anyone to share this with, so I ended up just Snapchatting my life away to show how fantastic my life was when, I, when actually I was really struggling and becoming depressed. My sister passes away September 29th, 2016. Fast forward several months. I'm very depressed, but I don't know it. I go back to work too early because I don't want to be that one that can't function because I'm Lindsay Boggs. I can do anything. Go back to work too soon. And I start driving my car. And every day I think about hitting a tree and I wonder what that would feel like. And I'll never forget just driving anywhere. I would just think about it or what it would, what it would feel like to hit a tree. And I remember thinking, that's probably not smart. That's probably not where my head should be. But it, but it just kept going and going and going. I was at a conference in Charlotte and I called my husband and I was crying on the floor in the conference room, bathroom, like here actually. And I was just sobbing, saying, I can't do it anymore. I'm really sorry. And I went to my hotel room. And you know the pads of paper that are in the room with the pen? I wrote my children a letter saying that I was sorry. And I wrote my husband a letter. I wrote my parents a letter. And I called my husband again. And I said, I'm really, really sorry. And he got in the car immediately, went to Charlotte to get me. 
and I was brought back to Raleigh, where I live. And we went to the hospital and they said, you know, you need to see professional help. We need to send you to a mental hospital. And I was like, I'm Lindsay Boggs. I'm fine. I'm fine. It was just like a moment of, it was just a moment. They're like, no, seriously, you have to go to a hospital. So there I spent the next seven days in a mental hospital. And looking back, it was the best thing that has ever happened to me because I want to live now. But it took me a mental hospital to get to that point. And my hope is that people don't get to that point where they have to go to a mental hospital, that they get help before that point. From then, I now see a therapist twice a month. In the month of September now, which is the month my sister passed, in October, um, I see a therapist once a week because I need to. What I want to recommend is that not all therapists are created equal. The first year after my sister passed, I was with the wrong therapist, and I didn't know that until it was too late and things got worse. So my recommendation is when you go, just like when you're interviewing for a job, you interview them as well. Same thing with a therapist. Don't just take it as, oh, this is my assigned therapist. Like, hope it works out. Make sure that you actually think about if it's working for you or not. I also see a psychiatrist. I'm very open and transparent that I am on medicine to keep me going every day. Um, some days are worse than others. I have emergency medicine for if I have anxiety. Hospitals give me tremendous anxiety. I can be watching a show that has nothing to do with trauma or grief, but they happen to be in a hospital because a baby is born. I go to the hospital with my sister and the tubes and everything, and I have anxiety. So it ta it's taken a lot for me to even get on this stage because everything was so perfect, and then to have this downfall and then being able to share my story on a platform like LinkedIn, which was picked up by TEDx. I did a TEDx talk on my nervous breakdown. And ironically enough, the TEDx was on the day my sister died. It was her two-year anniversary. And so I don't know if there was any signs out there, but that was a pretty strong sign that I need to go on stage and talk about my story because if I can just have one person. And that's what leads me to today. So I'm part of Uncrushed, which is a nonprofit for mental health. And it was co-founded by myself and three other people that have had tragedies in their life and have gone through mental strife. And um, that's why we're here. We want to talk about people's stories and have people come forward and share if they're so willing, because you never know when that one person could be impacted. And if I can just change one person's life or help them get to a therapist before they get to the top of the 21st building and almost jump, I would love to be that person, we would like to help you get to that place. So um, that in a nutshell is my story. And if you have any questions, we'll save them to the end. But um, thank you.